Welcome to another edition of the Go Nose Podcast. I am your host, Gregory McCoy. Uh, this podcast is by a fan for fans. I am not a journalist. I am not a reporter. I am, I am not a insider. I do not work for a website. The majority of my content comes from me, in my opinion. Other information comes from the internet. Today is December 27th, 2019. And this is episode number 27. And I'm going to stick with my same format. Highlighting one defensive player and one offensive player. And then I have a couple of other topics that I like to go into. So let's go ahead and get started. Um, Today's spotlighted players are going to be Travis J. Cornerback slash safety slash quarterback. Uh, That's my defensive player. My other player is going to be Maurice Smith, uh, offensive center slash offensive guard. Let's start with Travis J. Uh, Just looking at his film. uh, Well, first off, he's 6'2", 190. He can play any position in the secondary. Tremendous athleticism. Uh, his His athleticism, his talent jumps off the screen. Again, he can play any position in the secondary. Um, He needs to get his academics straight. Um, His freshman year, he was academically ineligible. Um, Thus, he couldn't uh, play any football his freshman year. Um, Also, watching some of his high school tape, uh, he's also a good quarterback. He's a good tackler changes directions with ease um i put him in the category of a jalen ramsey derwin james or Deion sanders uh his strength and conditioning needs work um if this guy can get his academics uh situated he's gonna be an all-time great um i don't think there's any debating that um like i said i usually don't break down high school tape But this guy is one year removed from high school, and that's like my rule. Uh, He didn't have any Florida State tape to look at. So um, just from his high school, it just looks like he was the superior athlete in every game in his uh, high school. The couple of games that I looked at, it just looks like he was the superior athlete on the field, whether he was playing quarterback or uh, defense. And uh, I really have to give the previous staff credit for recruiting this guy um, and keeping him in the fold, even though academics was an issue. And, um, you know, hopefully he got everything situated and he can get on the field. Um, My NFL uh, comp or comparison to him is going to be Jalen Ramsey. I mean, just tremendous athleticism for a guy that size. I mean, um, I think, uh, you know, this new staff has to put this guy in a position to succeed in the uh, defensive coordinator. You got to put your four best guys out there as far as the secondary. So um, he's way more talented than Stanford Samuels and Asante Samuels. So he's got to get on the field, man. Um, next, I wanted to look at Maurice Smith, uh, offensive lineman. He's 6'2", 300 pounds. He is, the most ath- he is the most athletic offensive lineman on the roster. Um, needs to get stronger. His uh, weight, he's 300 pounds, is perfect for his height. I see him as a center. Uh, if he can get the uh, awareness and the cerebral part of playing offensive center down, I think he could be a starter. Um, I think Ed, Andrew Baselli probably going to start next season because he's a senior, but um, he could challenge. He could challenge for the starting spot potentially. I'm not going to say Andrew Baselli has it locked up, but uh, he's probably the incumbent. Um, needs to learn how to finish uh, blocking, pass blocking and run blocking. Uh, can't be a very productive player if his desire is where it needs to be. 
Um, he is like a Ryan Khalil center type center. He's not a big guy. They're both like 6'2", 300 pounds. But he plays with angles and leverage. Um, so he, he, he could be a pretty good player for us if he puts it all together, man. Um, next, I wanted to go into, let's see. My top 10 most memorable moments at Dope Campbell Stadium. And these are, this is just my personal top 10. I know, you know, lifelong Florida State fans are going to have their most memorable moments. So I know I'm probably going to get beat up in the comments on YouTube, but so be it. Um, number 10, Carlos Williams run to beat Clemson. It was actually the last time we beat Clemson in 2014. So that, that has to be up there. Um, number nine, Stanford Samuels, the father, slash Roscoe Parrish collision. I mean, that's one of the biggest hits all time in college football, in my opinion. I mean, I think they both knocked themselves out um, in the rain. Uh, Stanford Samuels, the father, was an uh, undersized corner. He just knocked the wheels off. He knocked himself out, and he knocked Roscoe Parrish out. Number eight, Dalvin Cook outruns the Clemson defense. I believe that was in 2015 or 16, one of them. And... Uh, he just outran the whole defense, and then when he got to the finish line, he did the little, you know, clicking the tape like a track athlete. Uh, number seven, Peter Warwick reverses field on Louisiana Tech's entire defense. You know, again, one of the most iconic moments in uh, Florida State history, in my opinion. Um, Peter Warwick was just a tremendous uh talent when he was there number six peter bowl peter bowler and raynard wilson destroyed danny warfel um i want to say that was 1996 they just had a sack party and was just destroying danny warfel they got us later in the national championship game but um they couldn't stop bowler and wilson that game number five matt fryer Matt Fryer's game winner to beat Miami. Again, Matt Fryer is one of my all-time favorite players for Florida State. And, you know, game-winning touchdown, man. Uh, Charlie Ward face mask twist. Uh, the Rock, the uh, WWE wrestler, uh, he twisted, basically twisted Charlie Ward's helmet. <laughs> all the way around well not all the way around but basically all the way around on his face and that's just a moment i'll never forget um uh, let me see all right and number three let me see one second gotta look up something real quick all right chris uh chris winkies crazy play action to Marvin Menace. Again, he he took the play action and <laughs> he uh I mean, he just like he basically just walked to the back of the end zone and just threw it. Like I mean, it was just crazy, man. It was like he didn't even have the ball. And then my number one all time, that was number that was number three. Okay, that was number three. Excuse me. Number two, Peter Warwick, crazy catch and TD run against Florida. Marcus Housen was the quarterback. It was a tip pass. Peter Warwick caught it, juked a couple of guys, and ran into the end zone. Never forget that. Number one, most unforgettable or most memorable moment at Doak Campbell Stadium has to be choke at the Doak. I mean, 31 to 3, you keep kicking it to Vanover. 
and they come back and tie the game. I mean, it, it was just, you'll never forget that, man. And um, those are my top ten most memorable moments at Doe Campbell Stadium. Um, if you have a memorable memorable moment for Doe Campbell Stadium, please let me know in the comments. I would love to read it. Um, and next, I wanted to go to top 10 best school songs and i you know these are just things these are just in my opinion man okay and i'm partial to the ones that i hear pretty much all the time um number 10 miami number nine oklahoma number eight usc Number seven, Michigan. Number six, Notre Dame. Number five, Florida State. Number four, West Virginia. Number three, Florida Gators. Number two, Arizona State. And number one, all time uh, best uh, fight songs. Rocky Top, Tennessee Volunteers. So if you disagree or agree with that top 10, 10 best school fight songs, please let me know in the comments. All right. And then my last thing I want to talk about today is single digit numbers on jerseys. Why are players so obsessed with single digit uh, numbers on their jerseys? Um. This is what I wrote. The numbers make the players stand out to the TV and live audience. Some recruits have some recruits have went to certain schools just to wear a single digit on their jersey. In my opinion, the number nine is the most ugliest single digit number available. When defensive tackles wear single digit numbers, they make the number look smaller. Uh, number two looks the best to me the obsession with single digit numbers is so crazy they had to double um the numbers meaning two players could wear each number but they can't be on the field at the same time we have seen players get non-single digit numbers and have the single digit number tattooed on their person because they wanted a single digit number and they thought they were going to get it. Uh, even on the college football video games, people, uh, players are obsessed with putting single digit numbers on their best players in the video games. Back in the day, the NFL used to allow any players to wear any number. I wish the NFL and college football would allow this practice again. A few years ago, you had a Michigan quarterback wearing number 98. It was ugly, but the player got to express himself. And I wish college football and NFL would allow that to happen again. Um, I like it when a terrific linebacker wears a single digit number. It just makes him look more awesome out on the field. Um, single digit numbers should only go to the very best players. Um, I don't like the fact that they doubled like one player could wear a single digit number two or two players could wear a single digit number i think it should just be like it goes to the top guys they should just treat it like you selecting a captain or something um i don't think numbers should ever be retired i think you can retire the player and the name but i don't i think the numbers should you know be available to anybody um And that's pretty much um, it on the single digit uh, number for football jerseys. Um, I just, again, I can't thank everybody enough for listening to this podcast. I really do appreciate your support. It's available on YouTube. Uh, subscribe, hit the notifications button, and uh, please hit the like button if you like this uh video it's available on 
Apple Podcasts, rate, review, subscribe. Uh, Google Podcasts, rate, review, subscribe. And Spotify Podcasts, please rate, review, subscribe. I appreciate your support. And go Knowles. <laughs>